your phone with a QR code. <laughs> I do. I downloaded it. You what? Downloaded it. Me, me, me. Welcome, everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't as enthusiastic. Welcome! There we go. Well, there's a, another great episode of uh, Wake Up to Start Up. I'm Mike. Trista. Clark. Really? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, not Dr. Glackowitz. No, no. Nice. Some of you younger audience members may get that joke. So, uh, this week, uh, we're definitely going to uh, keep things rolling and talk about... Uh, some new and or exciting things that are happening out on the internet, uh, startups, small companies, uh, new services, that type of thing. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, actually I'm going to talk about a, a service called Likeify. Now Likeify comes from a couple of uh, Belgian laddies uh, from a couple of, <laughs> it's kind of a mix of culture there. Right? Belgian laddies. <laughs> a couple, couple of morning to you. How's your waffles? Uh, Boondoggle uh, Life Labs. And um, what Likeify is basically is to give a physical object uh, the ability to be liked on uh, Facebook or followed on Twitter or reply. So uh, ultimately what Likeify produces is a big fat uh, QR code with a thumbs up. Thanks for the extra support there. <laughs> um, for your customers or friends or whatever the case may be to scan and then like that. So um, in essence, what it does is it brings all your stuff into the social stream, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, um, those are really uh, their two main focuses. So with Likeify, it's a, as a developer, I think it's a pretty cool application. It's, it's fairly simple, um, so simple that I think uh, people like Trista can get in on the first swing. Um, and then Clark could actually explain it. Yep. So it's it's nice. And that was it was kind of a was back, a that was a little backhanded, bit of a backhanded uh, slide. Uh, no, these two are insatiably intelligent ish. All right. So I said all What do I do with like <laughs> Fi? What I do with like Fi is. Uh, basically, I'm going to go in, sign up, you can get a free account or a paid account. Uh, the free account pretty much gives you uh, the ability to do really simple landing pages. So you're going to create an account, you make your mobile landing page, and what that consists of is uh, an image, and you can put a, a little blurb of text, um, and you tell it what URL you want it to like. So typically speaking, people like Facebook fan pages. Um, or um, in the case of the, the QR code that I pulled together, it just goes to a URL, and what will happen is it'll say, uh, you know, Mike shared a link in my uh, timeline. Um, and then pretty much you print out the uh, the image that they give you, and you paste that puppy all around, and you just become wicked popular. So put it on a T-shirt. You can put walk it on around it. You're walking billboard. You know what I thought about doing. Because you know, we could go, like, you go to the grocery store or stuff. During lunch time, there's a lot of cars, or even at a bar. Mm -hmm. I want to put it on my car and see what people like. You know, like, but, I would thread me up <laughs> like your car. But I'd, I'd probably do like an alter ego. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to be my car. Right. Like I'd, something bad would happen. Right. It'd be like your so. AOL username. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of those girls from Chicopee would like you. <laughs> no offense to the girls from Chicopee. <laughs> so basically, uh, the, between the, uh, the application that helps you create the uh, QR code, it has reporting, and then the paid accounts have a lot of uh, really cool options as far as adding uh, multiple buttons on the, uh, on the screen there for people to like or follow, whatever the case is. But um, I give Likeify a thumbs up and uh, check it out. What you got, man? I have CrowdTap. So, CrowdTap was released in 2011 at South by Southwest by the CEO and founder, Brandon Evans. Um, it came out in beta and it was recently released out of beta this winter. Um, so it's really a new site, but what the founders and you know the people who are working at that company are trying to do is take traditional marketing and incorporate it into your social connections, 
brand awareness, crowdsourcing, and they're trying to empower the consumer. So letting the consumer decide um, the marketing strategies for certain companies. Let's use Old Navy, no, Old Navy as an example. They recently had a new pair of you know jeans come out. They have all those commercials, you know, like they're all futuristic and bright colored and kind of funky. Well, they put the site or the video on CrowdTap, and then people can like like it. They yes, no, um, you know, what are your yeah. thoughts on it? And then they can share it with their social network. So they're deciding how the consumer, you know, they're letting the consumers kind of spread their information virally, but also do you like this message? If they had a ton of responses on their latest commercial that said, no, we don't like it, they would quickly change it over. Uh, recently I was on there and one of the questions was Downies, you know, the fabric softener. And quicker they said, <laughs> that is not it. <laughs> the quicker. Bounty. Bounty. Broady. Downy. <laughs> so the fabric softener, Clark does not do the laundry oh, at home. Oh, downy. Downy. downy balls. Yes. They said, <laughs> they asked, what are three words that you would describe fabric softener? So, mm -hmm. you know, people might say certain, you know, key words, and then they use those key words in their marketing scheme. So yeah. it's really a smart concept. So what it is, is that it, it's an influential marketing platform. Uh, so the brands are getting what they want out of it because they're asking their consumers mm -hmm. directly, do you like this? Do you not like that? They're giving them coupons to try things. And then, you know, the consumer feels like they're getting involved. There's also, like, the game aspect. So you'll see, like, you can get different badges. You have rankings. You know, you have different levels that you can move up. The more you participate, the higher up the ranks you go. Eventually, you can cash out in their store. And their store, you can donate to a charitable cause. You get Amazon credits. Um, I think T-shirts. So there's things you cash out for. But I do believe a percentage of your points always have to go to a charity. So it might be like half of your points or 5% or something. So that way they're always making a donation, which is, you know, that's nice. I like it. So it's kind of like a less invasive version of those people at the mall asking you all the questions? Correct. They want to spray you with stuff. Correct. It's real-time <laughs> insights. Um, they've been showcased on TechCrunch, Mashables, Adweek, Fast Company, CNN, all over, they're doing very well. Company out of New York. Name dropping. And wake up to startup. And wake up to startup. So good job, crowd, crowd tap. Check them out. It's very cool marketing concept. Have <clears throat> screwed up that name yet? Crowd, crowd tap? No. How do you screw crowd that up? <laughs> How do you really mess it up? <laughs> crowd. 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 They do the Oriental Rubs. Yes. It's crowd. You don't have to be better. We live here. We live here. So, the, uh, <laughs> the startup that I chose to kind of talk about was actually founded in 2008. It's called Airbnb. And actually, the reason I chose to talk about this, because we were down in New York City last month, and uh, we were down there for a, a conference, and one of the people that we met down there was actually used a service called Airbnb to find a place to stay. So while we were paying the, you know, four or $500 a night to stay at the swanky New York hotel with a room about this big. Yeah, which is really not <laughs> swanky or worth it. Right. It was just a place to stay while we went out and had fun. But they actually stayed, used a service called Airbnb, which basically what it does, it allows people to rent out rooms or apartments to other users, to people, to guests that want to stay there. Whether it's people traveling on business or want to go on vacation or families, or even a lot of times people use it, if they want to move into a neighborhood but don't know what that neighborhood's like, they actually use oh, it to go stay idea. there and kind of get Check the feel of it. So if their car's there in the morning, then maybe, yeah, hey, it's not a bad place. So uh, <laughs> so Airbnb right now has, according to the most recent statistics, over 5 million nights booked across the world in uh, 19,000 different uh, wow. cities, which is pretty cool. cool. Um, the way it works is basically you log in, and when you register, you're going to log in using Facebook or your normal email address, and you can set up... The login and the setup is basically the same for someone that wants to run a place out and the same for someone that wants to stay there. So they go through all these qualifying questions because, you know, they want to find out kind of who you are. So if you register through Facebook, you have people who can recommend you and all that kind of fun stuff. <clears throat> so basically you set it up and you're allowed to, as if you're the person renting out the room, you can actually say, you know what, I don't want this person to stay there. But you have to be a registered guest oh, to yeah. actually stay there because, you know, you should be, people, a lot of times they do this on Craigslist where you can, like, you know, they do the whole couch surfing thing where you can kind of stay there and be like, hey, you know, I just want to stay in a place to crash. 
this actually qualifies you and goes through a whole security, all these types of questions of verifying you. So to make sure whether it's phone and SMS, whether it's Twitter or Facebook, they verify all the different. Well, yeah, because you're letting someone in your house, <clears throat> especially if you, you know, have kids and a family and you're like, you want to know who's staying at your house. I think if you have kids and a family, you probably aren't using this. No, a lot unless, of people Unless you do. need a sitter. No, they do. <laughs> have you watched the video? There is a video and it's a lot of families and they use it to make extra income. They rent out their house because they're trying to get to a, a better home. Yep. So they use it to supplement their mortgage, you know, additional income. So it's a smart strategy. And, and what's cool about this is actually the sellers and the actual people, the guests, they actually get rated. So you can actually, so two days after your vacation or your, your stay is done, you get an email thing, both the, the oh, person staying there and the person that hosted you, and you get to actually write a review. So when you go to choose whether or not you want, you know, me to stay at your place, you'd be like, hey, you know, <laughs> Clark came in at two in the morning. He was again. sloppy. Comes less risky. He went to the fire, <laughs> fire shop, five mess. or ten dollars place, and I don't kind of want him in my place. So it really gives it. It's it really brings kind of the more of a social networking type of thing to the actual staying, and it's very cheap. Do I mean, you pay through the app? Look at all the places pay? in You pay through the app, and actually Airbnb collects three percentage of. Three percent of the total stay amount, so, and actually they charge the guests between six and twelve percent of the for the booking fee and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like you see a regular hotel. Oh, tax. So it's, if this is twenty bucks a night, it's not just right. Bucks. It's like twenty five or something. Twenty math. Something. Twenty dot times point zero six. But but it's actually very cheap. Check it out. Coming to a Airbnb location near you. All right. The end. So not the end. The end. The fun new shit segment. Fun new. What? Fun new shit. Sugar honey ass tea. <laughs> so uh, this week we're picking uh, the Square app. Uh, was it about a year ago? Square came out. Yeah, about that. Uh, they have uh, a little reader for businesses or just anybody with a smartphone. You plug it in. Actually, Clark has uh, an example here. It's a small little reader here where you can slide your credit card through it. Um, and basically, if somebody owes you money or um, you're selling your, your car and you want to put it on a credit card, sure. that's actually a cool way of doing it. Um, what they're doing is uh, infiltrating through different merchants and having merchants use Square um, in, their, in their businesses. So um, basically what they're trying to do is get uh, you, the consumer, find uh, and create a Square account and then you can go and say like, oh, what business is near me will take Square. So you basically kind of just check in and say, um, you know, when I get to the ice cream shop, the video showed a really cool example. It's kind of a long-winded example. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> but, uh, they had to like tie up their dog outside and then go in. Just basically uh, do the transaction on your phone and then when you're done buying whatever it is, you just say, uh, put it on Mike's tab and they, They've already set it up on there, and so they can see that you were coming to do a purchase. The merchant types in however much the total was, and it's a done deal. So really, you never have to worry about forgetting your wallet. Or leaving your card someplace. Yeah, because more often than not, you'll have your phone instead of your wallet all of the time. So um, other companies that are trying to do, well, I shouldn't say trying to do, but doing right. the same uh, type is, like, for example, PayPal, they're getting back into the mobile um, aspect of it where um, somebody owes you money or you need to give somebody money, um, you can find stores that are willing to take the PayPal, um, I think it was a PayPal wallet, yeah. something to that effect where um, I don't have any money on me, I don't want to give them my credit card because the waiter or the waitresses might take it and scam it out. Um, I can just pay doing the same process. So. I feel like, I mean I like Square, but I also think PayPal because of their name, like people yeah. are going to latch on to that a lot more comfortable. And People know the name. Especially now, everybody's really concerned with security um, and, and, and having their accounts hacked mm -hmm. into. It, it's just one less point of failure there. So that's uh, our fun new shit. Thank you for joining us. Tune in next time. Well, lots of good stuff. Adios. Pieces. <laughs>